I'm Shane Rodness, and I'm really excited to be here today to speak about two of my favorite topics, uh, open source and security, and exploring how open source can help organizations build more secure environments. So who am I? Very good question. Uh, well, my background is in systems administration, so I'm a sysadmin with environments that span through Linux, Windows, and Mac, and infrastructure that varies between on-prem and cloud. Those that know how sysadmins work, they know their responsibilities can be vast. It ranges really from configuration to patching, to support, to scripting, to security, and occasionally swapping out the light bulb if the day calls for it. Where I get super passionate about what I do is in the automation and security spaces. I'm a firm believer that whatever can be automated should be automated. It's also a lot of fun automating previously time-consuming processes. It makes them more reliable and less error prone, but that's for another time. Security is the other side of that coin, and it should be at the top of every sysadmin's priority list. I'm super passionate about creating more secure environments for the organizations I work for, which is why I'm here today to discuss from a sysadmin's perspective how we can leverage open source in our never-ending pursuit of more secure environments. Outside of work, I'm still a big techie at heart. I'm really big on home automation. As Steve was talking about, IoT is, is my thing. Um, I like to say that throughout the pandemic, I've gotten my home to near sentience, but that's definitely up for debate, especially among this crowd. Uh, you can also find me hunting down family and friends that haven't adopted password management into their lives yet and aggressively selling them on Bitwarden. You're welcome, Kyle and the rest of the Bitwarden team. So now that we've got the formalities out of the way, let's dive in. Um, so just looking at a few of the current challenges we're facing um, as a sysadmin, we have an ever-changing landscape of environment, especially with the pandemic, where we had staff mainly in office, to everyone working remote, to these hybrid environments. And this continuous shift, it presents an interesting set of challenges that are requiring us to continually re-examine our security posture, the new technologies that would help us in these new environments, and then the implementation and security strategies around those technologies. And then next, the tools that we're using to help us do our jobs, they're also revealing themselves to be double-edged swords. As we've seen in the SolarWinds, SolarWinds being an IT management and monitoring solution, uh, they had a huge vulnerability that took place almost a year ago. Um, and then there was a set of exchange vulnerabilities, and all of these vulnerabilities led to organizations being compromised. So what happened in the aftermath of those events? Well, we had open source tools that were developed by the community and then subsequently released allow the community to work together to assess and then identify a compromised environment. So for example, we had a member of the community write and release a PowerShell script, which was specifically looking for the IOCs, so the indicators of compromise, when we initially became aware of the proxy logon exchange vulnerabilities. Microsoft then eventually released an open source version of their own script to detect those IOCs, and then prior to the, the patches becoming available. Now, what do the solar winds and the exchange issues both have in common? From my point of view, it's blind trust. And that's kind of where open source enters the conversation. Open source really has always been a gift for sysadmins and IT professionals everywhere. There's countless open source tools, services, and systems in place today that are used in virtually every environment already. So if we look at these four core principles of open source, we have the community, so the hive mind, which allows everyone who wants to contribute, participate, and give back to do so in an open and transparent way, which benefits everyone involved. Then you have collaboration. So in letting everyone contribute, you're working together to identify the best ideas, enhancing those ideas, then working collectively to enhance existing projects and subsequently solve problems. And then you have transparency. So the process, it's available for all to see and be a part of. You can have peers review your code. And in doing these things, you're building inherent trust in that process. Um, and then you finally have access. So when you create availability and access to all, you remove the barriers to be a part of the open source process. And then the access and tools that, and the projects that come out of them uh, are available for all to use. Sysadmins have historically always leveraged open source tools. We've contributed to them. We're no strangers to this process. So we can kind of see where this is going. We have an increased challenge of security. We historically leverage open source products. So how does open source fit into that need for increased security? Let's explore that intersection. This was just a great screenshot I wanted to share with, with everyone today. Um, there was an article on Bleeping Computer where they were discussing a recent RDP vulnerability, and this was in the comments section. 
Uh, I coined this individual an anti-open sourcer. I may have come up with the term, maybe not. It's, it's up for debate for sure. Uh, but this exploit was unknown until you posted it. Damn you, bleeping computer, which I just thought was so anti everything that we're discussing today. Uh, so I thought I would share that with you. Um, but it's a great example of security as a black box, which is something that may work in practice, but it's asking a lot for in terms of blind trust. Open source is obviously the logical alternative to that methodology. And as we have more companies invest and contribute to an open source uh, future, we're seeing more security focused open source solutions pop up and become leaders. And Bitward is actually a great example of that. Um, it obviously started as a small open source project with one individual, Kyle, who we've heard from today. Um, and it was such a concern that there were Reddit threads um, at the beginning where people were, were worried about what would happen with Bitwarden if Kyle was to die, which I'm sure made Kyle feel great. Um, but it's incredible to see where they started and how they've developed into a leader in this, in this space. And as we're seeing these new open source security projects develop, the tools and the guidelines that they bring, they're being implemented across the globe in organizations of all sizes. So when we apply the open source principles of community, collaboration, transparency, and access, it allows these security products to grow and become widely adopted. And in doing so, it raises the bar of security standards at organizations across the globe. So let's have a look. Let's, let's see what, what uh, open source security tools are available today for use. Um, so we have Bitwarden. Obviously, everyone knows what Bitwarden is by now but it is an incredibly powerful product to have in your arsenal. It helps the overall security posture of the organization. It has a phenomenal command line, command line interface that can be used in automations that I'm personally a huge fan of. Um, then you have Wazoo and Elk. And Wazoo and Elk, are those are actually four open source uh, projects there. So you have El uh, Elasticsearch, so the search engine, Logstash for ingesting those logs, Kibana, so front end visualization of the data, um, Wazoo, which gives you threat detection, integrity monitoring, incident response, and compliance. And all four of those work together as a cohesive scene. Then you have OS Query. So OS Query gives you po uh, powerful endpoint monitoring. It's really unique with the approach of treating the host OS as a relational database, which allows you to s explore data using SQL queries. Uh, we have OpenSCAP as well, which helps with configuration benchmarking for best practice in, in securing endpoints. It helps you achieve compliance with several frameworks, such as PCI, and as well as vulnerability management, and, or rather assessment and remediation. Um, then you have all the traditional ones like Nmap, Wireshark, Snort. They're all great examples of open source security projects that are invaluable to the community. And they continue to thrive and grow as, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as products due to embracing the open source philosophy. So just in closing, let's, let's have a look. What trends are on the horizon? Well, the workplace landscape, it's going to continue to shift. Um, as many of us spoke about today, there's a passwordless push uh, in identity management, which will definitely be interesting. And our threat landscape, it's going to change rapidly. Um, all these trends indicate two things. First, securing your environment is a constant job. It's often also a thankless job. If you're doing it well, you likely won't. Nobody will know you're doing it. Um, but this should be at the top of every sysadmin's priority list. There's also a proven benefit and success in utilizing open source from a sysadmin's perspective. As more co companies and projects commit to an open source future, we'll be able to apply those same proven benefits to the security of our organizations. And because of that intersection between open source and security, we'll collectively build to, uh, towards a more secure future, one environment at a time. So, Thank you so much uh, for, for giving me the opportunity to speak about those two topics, which I'm very passionate about. Um, I had a gif in that top right of a standing ovation. I assume everyone is, is on their feet with applause. Um, but in all seriousness, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to continue the conversation. Um, and other than that, enjoy the rest of the Open Source Security Summit. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you, Bitwarden.